Hey, what is going on guys? AJ here, and today I'm bringing you guys my long-requested and long-awaited Frost DK guide for 5.4.7. Now, this is going to be having all the information that's going to be relevant to Season 15 and beyond. This is going to show you how Frost DKs work, gearing, rotation, talents and glips, macros and tips, and it's going to most effectively show you guys how to play a Frost DK right in PvP. If you guys want to come back to this menu at any time, you guys can click the Frost Presence button in the top right corner of your screen. Or if you want to go to any of those choices that I just mentioned right now, you can just click on them one by one. If you guys enjoy the video, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys all throughout the video. Let's do it! Okay, so let's get a little frosty here, guys. So, how does a frost DK work? That's the big question here, and we're about to answer it. Now, I'm not going to get into the specific mechanics of how your rotation works. We'll get to that a little later in the video. But for right now, I'm going to tell you guys how they generally work. You have a few main abilities here. The main ones being Obliterate, Frost Strike, and Howling Blast. Those are your three main abilities. However, you do not want to forget about Necrotics and so on. The thing about it, what I see a lot of Frost DKs do, is they'll use their Obliterate, they'll use their Frost Strike, they'll use their Howling Blast, they can spin flags, whatever. However, they miss three crucial things, and that is Necrotics, Soul Reaper, and Dot Spread. Your Dots in Frost are really good damage. I mean, you can account them up to 30% of your damage overall. And if you get Dots on an entire team, you're going to do more damage than you ever would have thought possible. So Dot Uptime is important. Spread dots, that's important. Your Pillar of Frost is going to be your main burst ability. Pillar of Frost basically is going to increase your strength by 20%. So if you pop it with your attack, with all your burst trinkets, it's going to be a massive increase and it's going to lead to that massive burst Frost is known for. Next up, we got Howling Blast. Howling Blast is a great AoE spam ability. Technically, you can get procs by just auto attacking. And Howling Blast, you can dump these procs and you can spin a flag like that. It's an awesome ability, and it's great for spinning flags in RBGs. Soul Reaper. The Soul Reaper in Frost is fantastic. It's actually going to do really good damage, and it's going to lead to really just great kills. I would definitely just spam the heck out of that Soul Reaper. Next up on the rundown, we have Necrotics. Now, Necrotics are an important part of Frost, even though you might not think so. They are going to land your kills as well. Use, knowing how to use Necrotics and the Soul Reaper in combination are going to help you land kills. Lastly, we have Obliterate and Frost Strike. Now, th these are the two main abilities. Your hardest hitting ability is going to be Obliterate. This is where you're going to get your 300k crits from. It's ridiculous. Obliterate is your massive damage ability. That, along with Frost Strike, is going to be like your big kind of attack that's going to dump your ruining power. So that's what that's for. Frost DKs are high action. If I can't emphasize this enough, you guys are going to be going, going, going with this. It is all about button smashing and just trying to smash the right buttons at the right time. That is basically what Frost comes down to. Just spamming Howling Blast, Obliterate, and Frost Strike. How you run that rotation, we'll get into a little bit later in the video, as I said. But a lot of it is just knowing when to use your certain abilities correctly. Alright, so let's get into gearing. Alright guys, so let's talk gearing here. Now, the great thing about Frost is that basically you can keep all of your same reforges and gems from Unholy. It really doesn't make a difference. Everything I told you in the Unholy DK guide to go for, you should keep it. That basically includes gemming both Primordial Rubies and not breaking Strength Sockets with the Tense Imperial Amethyst. In your Meta Gem Socket, you should have a Reverberating Primo Diamond, or you can also run with the Tyrannical Meta uh, Gem that you get from uh, Conquest, buying that from Conquest. So it's up to you what you want to run with. But as far as it goes, you can basically keep the same gems and reforges. Now, getting into gearing here, uh, in chance that you're going to want to generally take our Strength and Mastery, same that you would for Unholy. And for reforging, you guys are going to want to get out of crit. Now, here's the reason why. You have procs in Frost. You have these crit procs going off all the time. So basically, what is the point of gemming crit, or excuse me, reforging in the crit if you have procs? It doesn't make any sense. So the procs go off all the time, so no sense gemming into crit. You're instead going to want to go into mastery and haste, which are going to be optimal for frost. Alright guys, let's get into rotation. Alright, so let's talk rotation. Now, frost has a very 
basic rotation. It's not something hard to learn. You can pick on up on it pretty quick, which is great news for you guys. So let's talk here. The so generally, you are guys are going to want to start your rotation out with your burst macro. You guys can find that in the macro section of this guide, but let's stick with this for now. So you're going to want to pop your burst macro, and from here, you're going to want to outbreak on your target. Or you can also pop your unholy blight and get a dot spread on the entire team. You're generally going to want to pop your unholy blight with your burst to get a dot spread on the team. From there, you guys are going to want to obliterate three times. From there, frost strike. Dump your howling blast procs for runic power and use your runic power to frost strike. So basically, you guys are going to want to use your procs for obliterate if you can. If you can't, it's whatever. Uh, sometimes you'll have a longer cooldown. Sometimes it's useful to pop that frost strike because honestly, you get a lot of procs. So you could activate a ruin and get that obliterate and get a proc right back after that. So think about it. Yeah, try and save your procs for obliterate. But if you can't, don't be afraid to use it on a frost strike. You want to have good uptime. Okay. And then after that, you guys are just going to want to repeat that, and you should be good to go. Alright, so let's talk about maximizing kills. Now, the thing about Frost is that, yeah, you can do your Obliterate, you can do your Frost Strike, you can do your Dot Spread, whatever. But this is going to show you guys how to get those kills. That's what Frost is all about. It's not about meter padding. It's about landing kills and getting your the other team wiped in an RBG or an Arena. That's the important part, not padding meters. This is going to show you how to do that right here. So now what you guys are going to want to do to maximize your kills is you want to use Necrotic Strike. It's an awesome ability and it hits just as hard in Frost as it basically does in Unholy. You can get up to 200k Necrotics on your target. It's fantastic. So go ahead and use Necrotic Strike. Also, use Soul Reaper. Apply it at about 50% when a target looks like they're going to go down. It's going to hit them at 35%. And the thing about it is that people on the other team often don't expect the Soul Reaper out of a Frost DK, which is great for you. Which means that if a target drops below 35%, it's going to hit him pretty hard. Probably 70 to 100k. And the thing about it is that the target's going to drop. So use these two abilities to the max. Next up, pop Unholy Blight when you burst. Here's the thing about it. Unholy Blight stacks with your strength. So if you burst and then you pop your Unholy Blight, your diseases from that Unholy Blight are going to tick for the damage that you are adding on to with your burst. Very important. Lastly, you guys are going to want to use your Horn of Winter for quick runic power. Oftentimes, you guys are going to want to find that, or you're going to find that, your Frost Strike, you don't have enough Runic Power to do it. What you guys can do is you can just use your Horn of Winter, and that'll give you oftentimes enough Runic Power to get that extra Frost Strike off and keep your rotation going smoothly. So guys, these are some really important tips, and I, you guys should really know these for how to land kills with Frost. Alright, let's get into Talents. Alright guys, so let's talk Talents. So for the first tier of Talents, you guys are going to want to take Unholy Blight for the reason that I just mentioned before. The thing about it, Unholy Blight is great for applying diseases and spreading them, which is awesome. So guys, use the heck out of your Unholy Blight, spread dots to team, and you guys will get a good amount of great damage out of that. And make sure that you're doing with your burst. Also, another thing I forgot to mention in the rotation is that when you Outbreak, it's going to increase the damage of your obliterate, so make sure that you have your dots up on your target when you do obliterate. And the thing about it is that this talent is going to definitely help you to apply the dots there. For tier 2, let's talk Lichborn. Now, Lichborn, as you guys know, really great ability. It's going to get you out of fear, charms, whatever. And it really is useful for those clutch moments when you just got to get out of that CC. That is what Lichborn is for. On top of that, it heals you. My god! So here's the deal, take Lichborn, use the Lichborn heal macro in the macro section, and it is going to help you out so much for getting out of CC. Okay, let's talk tier 3 now. So, you guys are going to want to take Asphyxiate for kills, Chill Blades for roots, and Death's Advance situationally. Now here's the deal. Asphyxiate is great for landing kills. Say that you have that clutch moment where you say, Alright, I'm swapping to the Druid here, I'm going to stun him, we're going big hard, and then you land a kill right there because he's in the stun and he can't do anything. That's awesome. Okay, let's say that you're facing a melee cleave and your healer's screaming out, I need you to peel for me. Well, guess what? That's where Chill Blains comes in handy. And uh, let's not forget here, you have Frost Fever with a uh, Howling Blast. You can slow a whole team like that. It synergizes great with Frost. So definitely use Chill Blains whenever. And Death's Advance, you know what? It's great for giving you guys an extra mobility increase, which is something that we definitely lack on. So definitely use Death's Advance great ability all right guys tier four we have a winner conversion my god this is 
so good. Now here's the deal. Death Pact is no longer good for 5.4, unfortunately. Here's the deal, they buffed up Battle Fatigue, which made it so that it only heals you for like 20% of your health at this point. It just doesn't work. However, Conversion is still good. Now the thing about it, you can go into Blood Presence and you can spam the Double Conversion macro. And if you don't know, it is also in the macro section over there. But the thing about it is a massive survivability increase and it's good for all brackets at this point. Now, Runic Empowerment. This is the talent for Tier 5. This is what is going to allow you guys to activate multiple Ruins by just Frost Striking. It's fantastic. And it's going to give you guys that good, consistent damage that Frost is known for. However, Blood Tap is good as well. Now, here's why. Say that you want to get Necrotics off. Well, Blood Tap is great for that. Say you want to get uh, Obliterates at Prime Times. Blood Tap is good for that. Blood Tap is like a saved up burst. And Runic Empowerment is like a consistent burst. So it's whatever fits your playstyle. Personally, I like Runic Empowerment. However, I see some great DKs run with Blood Tap. It's what you want to do. Alright guys, and so for your final talent here, you guys are going to want to run with Gorfiend's Grasp for RBGs and Desecrated Ground for Arenas. Now here's why. Gorfiend's Grasp, fantastic ability for RBGs. It's going to allow you to grip in the rings, blade storms, solar beams. It is a great ability and it can lead to potential team wipes. Definitely take it for RBGs and synergize it with other classes' abilities. Now, Desecrated Ground is also great for arenas. Here's why. You sit a lot more CC in arenas than you probably do in an RBG. And it's more important for getting out of those clutch stuns or CC or whatever. So definitely Desecrated Ground for arenas, hands down. Now, let's talk glyphs here. Regen Magic. My god, this is a good glyph. Added in 5.4. This is going to cut the cooldown on your AMS by half. Now, here's the deal. It is fantastic it allows you to eat cc and it depends on it's going to modify the cooldown of it based on the amount of damage you take so this can basically cut your ams cooldown in half humongous survivability increase here next up i love ibf it is a great great glyph and it's going to cut the cooldown on your ibf but it's also going to cut the uh duration of it it's basically used for getting out of stuns so i like it for rbgs because you sit a lot of stuns in rbgs but it's up to you really Personally, my favorite of all the glyphs is Death and Decay for Frost, mainly because you can catch a team in it. And, I mean, it's up to you on what you want to run. Dark Simulacrum is also good as well, but it all fits your playstyle. For me, I like Death and Decay. Next up, we have Shifting Presences. This is going to allow you to retain Runic Power in the arena, and it's a great ability for that. Last up, for the two minor ghosts, you guys are going to want to take Resolent Grip and path of frost now here's the reason why say that you're jumping down from lumber mill or you get knocked off you can pop that path of frost glyph and it will oftentimes save you from the fall damage so definitely take those glyphs guys okay guys so let's talk macros now here is the biggest and most important macro of all the burst macro this is what is going to enable you on pressing it to hit obliterates for 300 Hey, it's ridiculous. So, here it is. Hashtag show tool tip Pillar of Frost. This is going to show the cooldown on the Pillar of Frost for you. Next up, slash cast Pillar of Frost. After that, slash cast. It's probably going to be Prideful Gladiator's Badge of Victory. Then, slash cast Blood Fury. If you're an orc, it'll add an additional burst onto it. So, definitely, guys, use that macro the heck out of it. It's like on a one minute cooldown. Use it every time it's up for the maximum damage output. Alright, next up on the rundown, guys, we have the Lichborn Heal Macro. Now, what this is going to do is when you pop it, it's going to heal you at, for your Runic Power. Basically, what it's going to do, if you read the tooltip for Lichborn, it turns you undead. And if you read the tooltip for Death Coil, it heals undead things. So, when you pop this macro, you can spam it, and it'll heal you, which is great. So, it's going to be hashtag show tooltip Lichborn slash cast Lichborn and then slash cast in brackets at player so you're not going to lose your target by doing this death coil guys this is a fantastic macro definitely use it and next up my personal favorite the double conversion macro slash cast exclamation point conversion what this is going to do when you have runic power you can spam this macro like you keep hitting it and what is going to happen is you're going to actually have your conversion heal you for two times the amount it's going to tick twice instead of once so awesome macros, guys. Great for survivability. Use the heck out of them.
Next up on the rundown, we have a great macro for surviving. This is my personal creation. It is the IBF macro. Now, what's going to happen is when you pop your Icebound Fortitude, it's also going to pop Blood Presence. So, it's a great survivability increase. It's two for one, and it's basically going to really help you survive if you're taking a lot of damage. So, here's how you make it. Hashtag show tooltip Icebound Fortitude slash cast Icebound Fortitude. And then after that, slash cast Blood Presence is the reason why this works. IBF is not on the GCD. Blood Presence is so they can synergize together pretty well and it can give you a pretty decent survivability increase by using this macro. Alright, awesome guys. Alright guys, let's finish strong and let's wrap it up here. This is the tip section. This is going to show you guys a few cool tricks and tips and it's also going to like summarize the video up for you guys. So here we go. Now, number one, you guys are going to want to spread dots with your burst. I can't emphasize this enough. Use the mushroom. Use the unholy blight. Spread dots around the team. Dots and frost are important and they will do good damage. It will definitely tack on just by spreading dots at least 5 million damage in an RBG. Spread dots. It's important. Next up, use Howling Blast to spin flags. Oh my god, this is the number one thing. <laughs> Howling Blast. Okay, as a Frost DK, you need to spin flags. Which, but Spinning a flag means that you basically stop people from capping it. In an RBG, this is extraordinarily important. And Howling Blast being a AoE ranged ability is perfect. It was made for this. So you need to use it to spin a flag. That's its main purpose. Next up, as we said before, use Soul Reaper and Necrotix for kills. This is important. Although your Obliterate, your Frost Strike, and your Howling Blast are going to be your main damage source, these are the kill landers. So definitely use them when you're trying to land a kill. Very important. Next up, Gorefiend's Grasp. Use it to grip in the rings and blade storms. Synergize with other classes. It's all about teamwork. If you guys can grip in the rings and blade storms, it's going to be massive damage out on the other team, and it's going to make the healers croak. Next up, Double Death Grip to prevent casting. I said this in the Unholy DK guide. I'll say it again. Double Death Grip is fantastic. It'll stop a priest inner focus. It'll stop when a shaman has his uh, ascendance up. It is fantastic for stopping heals. Use it for that purpose. Next up. This is one for my healer friends out there. Root the melee off them. I'm telling you right now. I play a Holy Pally myself. You gotta root the melee off your healers. If you want heals, if you want the spells, you gotta play together as a team. Root melee off your healers. Grip melee off your healers. Do it, guys. It's important, and it's gonna help you keep the team up. You, by doing that, you can actually single-handedly help keep the team up. Important. And that's, of course, if you have chill blades, it's even better. Next up, use your Horn of Winter for quick runic power. If you guys are short on runic power and you need something quick, use your Horn of Winter for this. It is going to be that quick source of runic that's going to help you land the kills. Lastly, save your procs for Obliterate if possible. If not, use it on Frost Strike. Like, if you have like a 5 second cooldown and you have Frost Strike up with a proc, yeah, use Frost Strike. Okay, don't sit there for 5 seconds without a... Just because you have a proc and you're trying to save it for Obliterate, there's no sense in that. Chances are you have another proc by the time that Obliterate comes up. So use your procs if possible for Obliterate. So like if you have a one second cooldown, use it for Obliterate. But if not, then yeah, use it for Frostrate. Try and save them when possible. And that pretty much wraps everything up, guys. So thank you guys all for watching. I really appreciate you guys viewing this video and checking it out. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll try and get, read all your comments and comment on them below. If you guys have any questions, please let me know and I'll try and let, give you guys a good response back. And if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. I will see you guys all in my next video and if you guys want to check out any of the other guys, you guys can click them right above. So thank you guys all for watching. AJ out.